Oh, baby, baby, can it be somebody like you could really love me? So crazy, baby, can it be true? Somebody like me could be loved by you, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. When I was a little boy, I would sit at the piano just like this, but with my little legs dangling off of the piano bench, and I might play something like this. <laughs> this. These may sound like the random choices of a child, but they weren't. I was chewing on something, trying to figure something out. I was beginning to discover something. I was beginning to discover Music theory. <laughs> it's amazing to me that 25 years later, I'm sitting here to tell all of you about my passion for music theory. So, what is it? What is music theory? And why am I telling you about it? Well, you could call it the language of music. I like to think of it as a way to have a relationship with music on many different levels, different scales, micro and macro, from its smallest constituent parts to its most complex combinations. Here's another way to think about it. If a singer and a song are the who and the what of music, then music theory is the how and the why. And why am I telling you about it? Well, I realize that I can't tell you my story without telling you about music theory. It has been the foundation of my career and of my ability to redefine success for myself. And so I'm inviting you to come with me down my rabbit hole. And it can be weird down there, it can be a little strange, but we might just find something beautiful. We might find melody, and if we find melody, then harmony can't be too far behind. Rhythm is tricky. That's hard to find, but we are going to look for it. And if we do make it all the way to the bottom of the rabbit hole, we might even find music. Before we get started, I have a medical disclaimer for everybody. Now, you might know that 10% of people have a gene okay, that makes uh, cilantro taste like soap. Okay. Well, 99% of people have a gene that makes learning music theory um, feel like pain. Okay. I am the other 1%. I love music, and I love music theory, and I want to share that love with you today in the hopes that it provides you with insight into how to redefine success for yourself, for your career, or for your passion. So let's get started. Music has 12 notes, named by the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That makes seven. The other five we get by adding what we call accidentals. Okay, these are the sharps and flats, the in-between notes, the black keys on the piano. 12 notes. This brings us to our first stop down the rabbit hole, melody. Every melody you've ever heard has been a combination of some or all of these 12 notes. Isn't that amazing? All that music from these 12 notes. The most popular song of next year will be a combination of some or all of these 12 notes. The music that you're not paying attention to uh, on the elevator or when you're on hold trying to cancel your subscription to Cat Fancy or whatever. These same 12 notes and the song that you were listening to when you lost your virginity. The same 12 notes. I can see some people thinking about that song actually in the <laughs> audience. That's okay, we're all, we're all friends here. I heard this interview with the great musician Quincy Jones. He talks about meeting the even greater musician, Duke Ellington, the Duke, the great jazz composer. And Duke 
told him, Quincy, God gave us 12 notes. Bach, Brahms, Beethoven, Bo Diddley, Basie, Bird. They all use the same 12. Until he gives us 13, I want you to know what everybody did with 12. You see, the further we get down this rabbit hole, the more the whole idea of different styles and genres just begins to fade away, which brings us to our next stop, harmony. What is harmony? Harmony is any two or more notes played at the same time. In music, we call them chords. The thing about chords is that all different kinds of music, different genres, styles, and composers use really a lot of the same chords, a lot of the same harmony. So it doesn't really matter if we're talking about pop. Or reggae. Bebop. Or classical. Or jazz. These all may sound very different, but down here in the rabbit hole, they're actually speaking the same language using a lot of the same concepts of melody and harmony. And what's missing? Rhythm. Like I said, rhythm is tricky. Rhythm is tricky to find. And to find it, we're going to have to go almost to the very bottom of this rabbit hole, to a strange place where melody and harmony unite with rhythm and become Frequency. Frequency. What is that? Like, it's like vibration, okay? Like waves of sound in the air. Frequency. We measure it in hertz, like we would measure electricity in watts or amps or whatever people measure electricity in. But frequency we measure in hertz. Let's hear an A. A is a good place to start because its frequency is a nice round number. 440 hertz. See, every note has a frequency. Melodies have frequency. Harmony has frequency. And rhythm has frequency, too. But to find it, we need to go much, much deeper. This A is not going to cut it. We have to go lower. Let's try a lower note, maybe E flat. No, that won't do it. Maybe B or F sharp or C sharp. They don't sound like rhythm yet, at least not to me. They still sound like melody. So we're going to go lower down the piano here. Here's a G, a D, an A, an E, maybe the lowest note on the piano. And okay, that's an A too. First one was an A. This one's an A. The frequency of this note is 27.5 hertz. It's very low. It's almost to the bottom of the range of human hearing. But we need to go even lower. I'm fresh out of piano. Um, luckily, I've prepared a very special synthesizer. Okay, this is very special because it's going to allow us to hear frequencies lower than human beings can hear. This is what you get at TED today. Okay, I don't do this often for people. Let's hear this note again, this 27.5 hertz, this very low frequency, played by this special synthesizer. Some of you can probably hear that, right? That's the same note, same note, okay? But we're going to go lower than that, too. There's an E lower than that. Okay, we're going to have to go much lower. Just keep it coming, keep going. Now listen very carefully. You hear what's happening here? Right? 
slowing down. He started as a note, they've become these separate clicks. What happened? Okay, you know that scene in Spaceballs um, <clears throat> where, they, where they go so fast that they've gone to plaid? Remember that? Well, we just took a melody so low that uh, we've gone to rhythm. That's really cool. That's awesome. I think that's incredible. I'd like to invite my friend Rob Hooper out onto the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Hooper. Well, we've done it, okay? We've gone to the bottom of the rabbit hole, and we've found a place where melody and harmony and rhythm all unite. We have found music.
So what does this mean? To me, it means that if you go deep enough into the hidden places of your passion, you just might find a place where everything becomes connected in mysterious ways that seem almost impossible. Developing this kind of relationship with music for me gave me insights that made it easier to learn new skills and improve old ones. The barriers that divided seemingly unrelated genres and instruments fell away. And with those new horizons came better opportunities, better gigs, a more robust and fulfilling career. Find your rabbit hole. Go out beyond the borders of your passion and look for its fingerprints there. When you find it, somewhere you never thought you would, hanging out in the seedy part of town. Seduce it and get it to tell you its deepest, darkest secrets. Thank you.